Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Quick Tips Photography. My name is Marlon Perez, and today we're going to be looking at the MacBook Air. This is the tw late 2010 model. It's the 11.6 inch version, and we're going to do a couple things today. But before we get started on that, I'd like to say thank you for your support, and thank you for watching these videos. If you can hit the subscribe link and subscribe to me, that'd be fantastic. And if you hit the thumbs up, it'll just help you know that I'm doing a good job and you guys want to see more of these videos. So, um... We're gonna, we have a couple of things to do today. We're going to talk about the MacBook Air. We're going to look at uh, what it comes with. Uh, we're going to talk about the actual product. And, um, and then we're going to do some performance testing. So we're going to run programs like Lightroom, um, CS5, and we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff like that, uh, like YouTube video watching and stuff. And then we are going to um, wipe the whole thing and then compare it to a early 2006 MacBook that I've got here. And uh, that's it, so let's get started and let's not waste time. So what exactly do you get with this thing? First of all, you get the laptop, which is what you paid the huge chunk of money for, right? And then you get the, you get the power adapter, which is tiny compared to the 60 watt one for the, um, for the MacBooks. I mean, look at that, that size difference, right? Um, and then you get the power adapter, or the plug actually, and you just plug that one in there. Or if you want some extra, extra length, use the extension cable um, so we'll put that away and then you get the um, the manuals and stuff and so first of all you're greeted with a big hello hello and you get all the um, product info this is just basically the manual it tells you how to use it whatever then you get the one year limited warranty and you get some awesome stickers which I never use um, and then the coolest thing is you get the uh, MacBook Air software, the reinstall drive, which is just a USB stick. You can put this on it if you're traveling. You can put this on your keychain, and just in case you need to reformat your computer, you can do that right away. Uh, we're gonna use this later today, and and uh, hopefully it works out well. I've never actually used it yet. First of all, it's 11.8 inches wide, 7.56 inches deep. It's 0.11 inch high on this side, and it's 0.68 inch high on this side. It weighs in a light 2.3 pounds, which makes it perfect for on-the-go computing. On the left side, we see a power port, a USB port, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, as well as a microphone. On the other side, we see Apple's patented mini display port, as well as another USB port. When we open it up, we're greeted by Apple's stunning 11.6 inch display. Now this display has 1366 by 768 pixels and that's run by NVIDIA's internal um, GeForce 320M video card. That video card has 256 megabytes of DDR3 um, SD RAM. Now later in the video we're going to find out how it handles both online and offline high def video. Um, so wait for that. Now that we're on the topic of internal tiddly bits, um, let's, um, let's talk about the computer. The base model comes with 1.4 GHz uh, with a 1.4 GHz Intel Core 2 Duo processor with 64 gigs of flash storage and 2 gigs of RAM. If you throw some money at it, which we did on this model, um, this model comes with 1.6 with a 1.6 GHz Intel Core 2 du Core 2 Duo processor, Core 2 Duo processor, <laughs> and uh, 128 gigabytes worth of flash storage and 4 gigs of RAM. So um, let's get to testing. Let's play with it. Now let's start to use this thing. First thing we're gonna do is turn it on and we're gonna see how fast it boots up. Here we go. See the Apple logo. And then you'll start to see the whole twirly thing. And now we're almost, yep, now we're fully loaded. Now to start things off, we're gonna go to Safari and we're gonna go to YouTube. And we are going to load uh, my video which is our 1080p test sample video and for those who want to use the um, 1080p test video to test their computer I would definitely tell you go ahead um, so load it in 1080p and we're gonna watch it in high def now the computer handles 1080p video quite well um, there is a bit of frame lagging depending on how long the video is um, and it's it does a decent job, and it does a better job at 720p. 
just as we expect. Now we can turn this off and then I have the same video sample on a on a file and we're gonna load that up in quick time. When you actually have 1080p video loaded on this computer, there's absolutely no lag and the computer can definitely handle it. This video is framed from my um, 5D Mark II and it does such an awesome job. We're gonna quit that again and then we're gonna go to PowerPoint. PowerPoint loads super fast and next thing you know you have your your PowerPoint right in front of you and you can go ahead and start um, viewing it and whatnot. We're gonna quit that and we're gonna start loading up Word. Word loads super fast as well and there you go. Um, this is a 10 page file that I've made just recently and I'm gonna quit that now and next thing we're gonna do is open up Photoshop CS5. Photoshop CS5 loads really fast on this computer. Um, this is a raw file on my 5D Mark II and now the, the file is being converted into an editable file in Photoshop. Now this part takes a bit of time to just chew through the, all that data and when you're loaded, when you're fully loaded, the computer doesn't lag at all. So you can go ahead and scroll down, I can see I can see how sharp my photo is and I can actually just start doodling. So uh, there we go. Um, there's absolutely no lag, I haven't experienced any when using Photoshop CS5. Um, so you can't go wrong. I'm gonna quit this now, I'm not gonna save the photo. And that's it. We're gonna close that again. And now we're gonna just open up some random Word files and PowerPoints and Excel. We can look at uh, Messenger. We can look at um, we can look at opening CS5 um, Photoshop CS5 again. We can look at opening um, other programs like InDesign. No, let's use Flash. Let's open a Flash. Let's open up uh, Premiere, Premiere Pro. And uh, let's open up Lightroom. Lightroom would be a good one. Lightroom. Let's open up Firefox. Uh, and now I'm just loading the computer. And we're going to see how hard this computer works. Um, we're going to open up some more pages on Firefox. Just because I can. Um, and it just loaded. And here we see all of our pages. We can go back to, sorry, Premiere is now asking me to do something, such as create a new project, and we can just go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, it's asking for a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Flash is already loaded, we can load up InDesign. Um, and the computer actually handles all of this stuff really well, and uh, which is actually quite surprising. It's perfect for light photo editing, light video editing, it's perfect for a whole stack of stuff um, now it's perfect for people who are on who are always commuting people who are always on the go uh, people who travel it's a light laptop that you can use and it's actually really powerful and more powerful than a lot of people imagine we're gonna quit all these programs as you can see they're all quitting right now and uh, we're gonna ask, we're gonna ask uh, Firefox is asking us to save and quit and then we're just gonna shut it down shutting down as fast as get is fast and the reason why we see all this performance um, all this performance from this computer is because of that SSD drive that SSD is able to load programs and load files a lot faster than the conventional computer that runs on a hard disk and that's pretty much it um, now the next test would be to use um, the um, the USB restore thumbstick and let's get to that one.